rather cool, chilly morning out in San Francisco. About 50 degrees. I think we can handle that though. We got a lot of news coming and there's just no time to tell it. I'll see what I can do. Let's go over to the UK. Rolls-Royce plans 16 new nuclear plants for the UK. The project will create 6,000 new jobs. Of course, they always pump out double what it actually will give you. So about 3,000 new jobs over the next five years. It says it will, it will create low carbon electricity. Eh, that is complete lying. The UK is trying to get net zero emissions by 2050. But doing it this way, why would you do it with nuclear? First of all, you're going to run out of uranium. That's getting real hard to find nowadays. Second of all, you've got all the waste. What are you going to do it? You have to move it. You have to store it for millions of years where people won't drill into it, burrow into it, or you won't end up with a volcano coming up through it. So you can't store it underground. The politicians are too stupid to understand that. There's only one place you can store it, and that is in orbit, way, way up high, where it will never, ever come to Earth. But then you'd have to figure out how you keep it from running into different spaceships and things. Maybe a long, slow journey into the sun, but then we're polluting the sun. Why would we do that? How about we just not do nuclear power? It is a complete falsehood to say that it's, it's, it's a low emission uh, electricity when really it's a high one because you have to watch it forever, millions of years. How much uh, fossil fuel would that take? The, the vehicles, people getting there and back, the, the checking it, the testing it, the on and on and on will take fossil fuels. So that's the red herring thinking that nuclear energy is a solution. It is not. I'll show you another type that is a solution that has a big problem. So one of the alternatives is wind farms. Now wind farm is an alternative for a low carbon footprint, but you still have to account for the building and the maintenance of these windmills. One of the big problems is the windmill blades are not recyclable and they do wear out rather quickly. So there are two ways of getting rid of all these blades that are coming out, is either bury them in landfills or burning them the problem with that is, is that this is a composite material made of glass, different types of glass, or carbonate material. And you don't want to put all that pollution into the air, so that's not a solution. So again, this is going to have to be a you and I kind of thing, paying more taxes so that they can be recycled, because they are more expensive. And you do have to account for the cost of the recycling. Uh, an average wind farm blade a turbine blade is 260 feet long, weighing 36 tons. So it's not a small problem. It's a big problem that needs to be dealt with right away. And again, the government can do it by paying a little bit. Every, every person can pay two or three cents more per year on taxes, and that will help recycle the blades. You, you got to do it, people. You have no choice. There is no other choice. There's the wind farm and hydro, and hydro has its problem. If you took hydro, a, you know, several steps higher than it is today, instead of building dams, you would convert a little bit of river water off into tanks somewhere where they could fill up underground and be storage tanks for both water use for drinking and for agriculture that would be done in the cities. You, you, we have to take all of our engineering up to a higher level of being more friendly to the planet. What do you think? Well, I already know. You guys think it's a long lost uh, goal years ago. 
and that we have no choice and to try to save ourselves is just crazy. Well, I'm just that way. <laughs> if I can see a fix, I'll try and get to it, no matter how hard it is. And one way we could use alternatives is through water and wind. I don't see so, uh, solar or nuclear power being an alternative. Both of them are high intensity manufacturing and take a lot of rare earths and other things that we don't have much of. And so you're relying on something that is just short of running out anyway. And you can't get rid of the stuff to begin with. It doesn't make sense. Why not use renewable water and renewable wind? Hey, <laughs> you got no choice. Do you? Alright, let's do some politics. Of course you know that I've always been into politics. And right now, I just don't understand why people think that Trump is anything great. But we saw it just Saturday with a huge brew of Trump supporters. Of course, at night it got violent because the Biden supporters got angry with the Trump supporters and uh, got a little violent. So here it starts, right? Is this the start of it? Hmm? Or maybe the cops can uh, control this? We'll find out in the future. But why would anybody with a record, a criminal record like Trump, be such a hero? Trump has one impeachment, two divorces, six bankruptcies, 26 sexual assault charges waiting for him once he leaves office, over 4,000 lawsuits, not including since he's been in pre the president. So add another two or three hundred on top of that. So according to the New York Manhattan District Attorney's Office, he says that Trump is illegally rushing drilling leases in the Arctic before Biden takes office. And apparently that's not too legal, what he's doing. But of course, Trump doesn't do anything that's legal. Could he ever do anything that's legal in his life? Well, other than die. The Manhattan attorney says that our, lo our way of life is, being, is ever closer to being destroyed forever by these kind of actions that Trump is doing. But it's very interesting that in the wildlife refuge where Trump wants to drill now, get those leases going so he can get his payola, is that there's a tribe that lives up there. The Gwich'in tribe lives up there and nobody's asked them whether they want drilling or not on their land. This is the U.S. We ask nobody. We just do. Trump plans on doing exploration this winter in the wildlife refuge and we've seen the damage it does to the environment forever once that that's done it's ruined forever but you know that's trump for you he doesn't give a rat's ass about anything but himself and his money you know when you're a child you do things um, because you don't believe that any anything wrong will happen well when i was a child living in Peacock Gap in Marin County. We had hills that were very rounded like this. Well, more like this. And as kids, we lived over around the golf course. You know, the houses were here kind of thing. And the hills were all like this. And we would go up during cardboard sliding season, which was late spring through summer when the grass was all nice and tall and brown and slick. And we would go around and we would find ourselves an old refrigerator box that somebody would leave out for the kids because they knew that we liked it to use these for cardboard sliding all season. So we would uh, tie ropes onto the, the handles that were in these boxes. And we would tie ropes and then we would grab the ropes and we'd haul this box up the hill and we would all get inside the box and the other end was closed up so we couldn't see where we would go where we were going and we would just all jump in the box and the thing would start taking off down the hill at, at quite a clip 25 30 miles an hour probably and one time 
and then it would just go all the way to the bottom and usually we just hope it would stop which was usually the case because you'd sort of look before you did it well one time i'll never forget this because we were getting pretty good at it and we were and the slide was in perfect condition and we all jumped we'd run and jump in the box to get it started and it would come flying down the hill but one of us jumped funny and the box turned sideways and began to roll like this down the hill and I remember when it started to fly sideways that a friend of mine got airborne in the box and flew out of the box and smashed into all these bushes and we the, le the people left in the box while we were tumbling. We thought that was the funniest thing on the planet. We just laughed and laughed. And then all of a sudden we found ourselves rolling into boulders and rocks. And we were smashing into each other and the box was tearing apart. And I'll never forget it. Nobody got hurt because kids are so flexible at that age. But you know... After a while, you you grow you know you grow out of that because you do get hurt after a while, and you learn not to do crazy stuff like that, which is just nutty. I don't know what made us do things like that. We were kids. What do kids do? And the same goes for the president. You you don't do things like climb in a cardboard box and fly down a hill at your age because you know better, don't you? It's the same kind of thing. Over time, you learn better. It's as if Trump never learned not to do it. Now, how and why are so many people so glued to him? I don't understand it. He's evil. He's, he never follows the law. He's a law breaker. He's, uh, he steals and swindles people's money. He's taking away your rights as a citizen in the U.S. He's refusing to concede on the election and he's fomenting the violence wherever he goes and it's just the beginning he keeps telling people to stand by stand by for what anybody have any ideas i appreciate all the ups the downs the new subscribers the unsubscribers the commenters all of you i appreciate you all and go ahead and let me know what you think and until next time peace